Hi YouTube fam! So today I'm going to take you behind the scenes of how I film videos like these. I know you've seen all these cooking videos everywhere on the internet and you're wondering how is it even done? Today is a content day in my life as a food blogger, food content creator and I want to take you behind the scenes of how everything is made. So if you're excited, you want to watch this video to the very end so that you can catch the whole process. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's so, so important. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it to as many people as possible who should see this video. So I've already done the planning. I've gone grocery shopping. What I'm going to be doing today is actually filming the video. So you're going to see the different angles I use, the techniques and certain things like that. Then once I'm done, how I edit it, how I upload it and all the other things that comes into play before a video is posted. I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you begin to appreciate how much work goes into any video that you see on the internet. So I'm going to be using natural light. Here is my light source, but I, the light source is not enough for how I want the scene to be shot. So I'm also going to be having my soft box in there. I'm going to be shooting with my camera, which is the Sony A7R II. But everything I'm going to be doing in this video can be shot on any phone you have at all. I love working with music. I actually have a working playlist. I always want to make sure my favorite song is playing in the background so that I'm able to be entertained and stay in the zone and stay active all the time. So the first step is actually setting up, you know, getting your camera ready, getting your um, ingredients ready, getting your cookware, whatever it is you're going to be using for your shoot or your shot, you need to get them ready. So this is me, you know, trying to um, station the camera in a way that I want to capture the scene. As I said, I'm going to be shooting this set or this scene with natural light and then my softbox. So I'm going to position my softbox in a way that um, highlights or gives my scene the best look. So I'm going to be using this more as a reflector, right? So the, wherever the, um, the natural light is coming in and it doesn't reach, I'm just going to put the softbox there as a fill light. This will ensure that light is reflected back into the scene where the natural light doesn't go all the way. If you want to be getting interesting shots, get ready to be carrying your phone or your camera everywhere because sometimes you'd have to carry it to a different setting, a different place or a different angle. So this is me trying to get a scene. I'm done shooting the first scene. This is the second scene. I'm trying to, you know, um, shoot um, a washing part of the video. And at this point, my... my Tap wasn't fixed yet, so I had to do it manually. So I had a bowl in my hand trying to pour it and then wash the ginger in the first place. Before anything, I've already washed the ginger, right? But then you still need to do a little bit of action in the video for people to get the story. Sometimes you don't need to do all this, but based on the story you want to tell, there are certain um, instances or shots that you need to include in the video. Also, always make sure that you are always checking your camera if it's shooting because there are instances where you finish shooting, you check your camera and nothing shot. And that's like one of the most painful things in the world. So here I'm done with that scene. I'm also going to carry this to a different place to get another scene. You need to have a lot of strength for this work because there's a lot of carrying and moving around. One thing I would encourage you to do when you are filming is to try different angles, different settings, different different arrangements so that you get different looks when you are editing the video when the video is just shot from one angle it doesn't make it too interesting so you can shoot some from below eye level above eye level aerial shot which is like overhead shots and um, straight on so just learn about the different angles when it comes to shooting and then you can apply all these when you are shooting it makes the video more interesting it makes it more visually appealing i also like including a lot of natural transitions so transitions are like how one video moves into the other so you can just think about okay um when this video ends i want it to move into this direction and then you can create your own transitions it makes the video also more interesting to look at so one thing that food bloggers do not show you is that there's a whole lot of work that goes on behind the scenes sometimes the one minute video you see is probably 30 minutes or one hour of cooking but you see the video and you're like this person didn't cook this thing well because why was it so quick but then we cannot show the whole process of cooking a one hour meal in one minute so you have to cut a lot of things short so if you do if you don't see what you want to see it doesn't mean it didn't happen so this is me you know cutting a lot of the things outside or off camera i cannot cut decide to cut everything on camera that's going to waste a lot of time and besides even the ones that i do shoot on camera sometimes during editing you don't use everything you cut some out of it 
I've already spoken about angles, but I'm still going to speak about it again because it's very, very important. It's the reason why you see one video and it catches your attention and you see another one and you scroll past it. The different areas that you shoot, sometimes you do close-ups, sometimes you do wide shots, overhead, straight on, 45 degrees, aerial shots. All those things are very, very important. Most times when I'm shooting, I'll shoot the same video from different angles. So for example, I'll shoot me putting something into, um, let's say a pot, um, overhead and then close up or 45 degrees. Then when I'm editing, I merge them. So you see the, the transition, me taking it into the pot from one side and then when it lands in the pot, it's coming from a different angle. And it makes the video very, very interesting. And I've also said this, but I'm going to say it again. Real filming is so painful. Like, imagine that you have um, finished a whole setup or a whole scene and then you go and it didn't film. And you've used everything and you have to, like, restart. It's so, so painful. So, always make sure, is this camera shooting? Is it shooting at the angle that I want? Is it, you know, is it blurry? Is it clear? All those things. You need to check them periodically. Don't wait till you're done filming the whole scene before you go and check the camera. That's a mistake. The following scenes are all things I did behind the scenes. So at this point, I needed to bring out the blender and then um, blend the ginger. So because I, need, I, I needed to take time to do some of those things, like look for the blender and all that, I turned off the camera because I needed to save battery. Even though I have extra battery, there's no need for it to be on when I'm not using it at the moment. So I went to take my extension board and then, you know, just be prepping things. I needed to also charge um, the extra battery I had so that I have enough power. And then, you know, just everything else you see here is behind the scenes. That's all I can say. Yes. So I'm going to um, bring the blender from the cupboard or the cabinets, wherever. And then I'm then coming to, you know, I have to clean it. There's a lot of dust in my area. So it means I have to be cleaning every second. Because you put something there today, tomorrow you come and it's covered in dust. So, and you always want to make sure that the videos are shooting are in good quality the things are clean and all that so i had to clean it before i started using it so here i'm going to put it on it and then i'll go and then turn on the camera to check if where i've put it is good or i'm just going to change the angle to where i want to shoot it then i'll take it off again and take it on i mean as, as i told you there's a lot of back and forth a lot of running around so i'm taking it off and then i'm now bringing it in the scene because i've checked from the camera and it's good then i'm blending it also, in the process of blending, I'll try different angles. So I'll try one wide shot. I'll try another one um, close up and then different angles. I actually wanted to shoot from the overhead so that I can capture it in the blender. You know, blending has this beautiful feel it gives to it. But then, unfortunately, the tripod I use has a restriction. It doesn't shoot overhead because it doesn't have that extendable arm. But I'm going to get a new tripod very soon and I'll be able to do that. So I just have to stick with these different and um, these um, straight on angles but it still came out great i'm going to show you the end product at the end of the video so please watch the video to the very end so that you don't miss that part you're going to enjoy it trust me also there are certain things you need to know when it comes to filming different videos so if you are filming reels and tiktok you don't want to film the entire video and then now you are left with like an hour or 30 minutes video and you need to trim it down to one minute. That's a lot of work. You sit in, uh, during editing, you just sit there and you spend the whole time trying to think about where do I put this, where do I put that. But then when what is the best way to go about it? Film it in bits. So every action that you do, you film it in bits based on the story you want to tell. So I'm going to talk about the storytelling. So for this video, what I had in mind is I want to help people or tell people that, okay, if you buy a bulk of ginger and it's just sitting there, there are ways you can store it to make your life more easier. So you can create a ginger paste, right? How is a ginger paste made? You buy the ginger, you wash it, you blend it. So basically that's all this video is about telling people how to store their ginger but then you want to make it interesting so that's where you come in with the angles and then the different ways of filming it when you watch the end results at the very end of this video you realize that this part was one of the most interesting parts to look at because i shot it i shot it from different angles the whole thing was just me putting the ginger into do you see my dance <laughs> the whole thing was just me putting the ginger into the jar but i wanted to capture it from different angles so i had one where i was capturing it from the top where i was you know just putting it inside like this and then i had another one where as it was dropping into the jar i also put it there right now the final scene i'm going to put it in the refrigerator because that's how it's stored 
it all falls part of the storytelling i'm not just telling them that once you make a ginger paste just leave it anywhere you can store it in the refrigerator if you want it to last long so that's me doing it and sometimes you put it in the refrigerator for just scenes and you come back i'm coming back to scoop every single thing from the blender because i'm not going to waste a single thing things are so expensive these days once i'm done i'll just send it back to the refrigerator again because that's where i'm going to store it now i'm done i have to clean up this is sometimes one of the hardest for this video it was just you know very simple no chopping no cleaning no plenty doing stuff right so cleaning up was pretty easy i just had to you know put my lights back where i took it my extension board everything else my camera and all of that and then i'll just go and wash the things i used it wasn't too messy thank god but for some videos yes let me just do my little dance before i continue for some videos after you are done you need to clean a whole mountain of utensils yeah sometimes it's tough but then it's all part of the work right yeah so this is me just you know cleaning up you have to happy yourself and i was listening to music i told you music puts me in a good mood yeah so here i'm just you know trying to put some water into it i'm gonna wash this and then i'll be back also i recommend cleaning up right after you are done sometimes you may be tired like sometimes i'll film like three or four videos and i'm just so tired i just want to lie down but clean up after you're done and you would have yourself to thank after you're done because sometimes when you go back and then you come and it's not clean that's extra work for you so here i have my stuff washed i've cleaned the surface with my my cleaning stuff it makes the place smell very nice and then once i'm done i'll just you know spray the place and all of that finally we are coming to you know file transfer so i shot this video with my camera so i'm going to be taking out my sd card and then i'm going to be putting it in my dongle if you have a macbook you know you have to connect a dongle before you can put in the sd card so that's exactly what i'm doing in this scene and i'm just i was singing a song like i listen to music a lot when i'm working not only when i'm working yes so now when you put it inside you can get access to all the files that you took and then yeah exactly so right when you put it inside if you're going to be editing in final cut pro so final cut pro is the default editing app on a um, macbook there's also imovie but there's like one that's professional it would just come like this so if you want to import it into your final cut pro you do just that but then for this um, video i'm just going to do some very quick edits so i'm going to share via airdrop to my ipad so that i can edit it on my ipad i love editing with my ipad because it gives me so much flexibility then it gives me a wide surface to work with unlike my phone which is very small so it's like i have a phone app but then i have a big surface to see whatever i am doing so that's exactly what i'm doing you know trying to cut out the fluff trying to arrange the transitions and then make the story um, correspond so that when you're watching the video it actually makes sense to you you're going to see the full video at the end of this um this video so don't forget to you know watch to the very end and at this point if you're here please subscribe and share the video to anybody who may like it so yeah that's basically everything from start to finish and it depends on the kind of content to be created the number of content i have to create this is just one video and this is a very very simple video no cooking no plenty cutting no plenty washing there are some videos or some content that you have to do a whole lot but i wanted to use a very simple recipe to you know um, explain the process and make it much much more easier so a few takeaways that i would like to share with you first is experiment with multiple angles you realize when i was editing that i shot different angles of the same scene and then i merged it when i was editing it makes it way way easier and more interesting for the video like it makes it more interesting to look at and don't just think about it like you're cooking you're not a cook you are a blogger you are trying to tell a story with what you are doing the food the content so make sure it's visually appealing it's sending a message it's telling a story it makes it much more easy to digest also another thing is that keep practicing you wouldn't start today and your video will look like mine i've been doing this for more than two years and if you see my first video and you see the video i do now you see that there's been a huge update keep going keep practicing keep learning keep watching videos of other people i watch videos of other creators like something because i want to learn from them then the next thing i also want you to know is that learn how to use lighting lighting is a big deal whether it's natural lighting or artificial lighting when you know how to use lighting 50 percent of the work is done the final thing is editing editing is what brings everything together editing is like the bind 
the, the binder, right? So you can shoot all the scenes, but editing is what will make it look nice. You realize that I had to cut out a whole lot of things because all those things are not necessary. I think I'll add the final one is always make sure you shoot in bits. When you try to shoot everything all the way and you're editing, it's a lot of work. Imagine you have like 30 minutes of video and you have to make it one minute. That's a lot of work and you spend so much time editing. But then if you shoot everything in bits, like a few um, seconds or a few minutes of each scene, then when you put it together, it's easy to cut out the fluff and then keep the ones that you need. So I hope this video was helpful. I'm going to be bringing you more content like this, more behind the scenes and more of how I do my stuff. So to another video, it's bye.